What makes India's scarier unit is that Jaspreet Bhumra hasn't hit top form yet. With his five wickets so far coming at a nearly an average of 30 and an economy rate of 5.3. That's just not Bhumra. Now that was just before the Afghanistan game. And I'm not sure whether Jaspreet Bhumra or the rest of the Indian team have been watching our videos on World Cricket Chat. Incidentally, you can also subscribe to them by clicking on that red subscribe button. But Jaspreet Bhumra came to the party when it really mattered. Let's talk about Boomra in a bit. For now, it's about India and West Indies who will be meeting each other in this World Cup encounter at Old Trafford in Manchester. Not this Old Trafford, because this Old Trafford is for the football. As I said, I am at uh, Old Trafford, the home of Manchester United. Looking on, uh, there are those two floodlights that you can obviously see. Uh, they are uh, at the Old Trafford Cricket Ground, which is where I'll be headed now. Just hoping that it doesn't start raining by the time we get down to the India West Indies action. I'm outside the Old Trafford Cricket Stadium. There are signs and I hope it doesn't start, start raining today as well as uh, on the day of the match. I have a video to do. If it starts raining, Now India's batting showed the kind of nervousness against Afghanistan. Uh, that you expect something from England on those kind of pitches. We have seen how England have batted. Uh, in the Sri Lanka game, even in the Champions Trophy semi-final. And by Kedar Jadav's own admission, I think India scored 30 to 40 runs less than what they should have, even given that pitch and those bowling conditions. So, our actual plan was to look for around, around 250, 250, 260 targ we were targeting, but we fell short of 20, 30 runs. So, when while going into the fielding, you know, we knew that we have to make up uh, those 15, 20 runs in fielding. But uh, obviously, you know, uh, credit to the bowlers that they defended this small total. Now, India looked like they had got themselves in a good position 133 for 3 in 30 overs. You would probably want to double the score from there. But to score just 91 runs in the final 20 overs uh, did not look like uh, this was coming from a team that wants to win the title. And this was against a team that had lost five games in a row. So that was a bit of a surprise. In fact, India batted like uh, uh, they knew that they had those extra two gears, but somehow were not able to get those two gears going. They stuck in that third gear, never found the acceleration as these stats show you. This was a kind of batting display that you have to be afraid such a kind of thing from the team and the expressing as it's First time for India in this tournament that neither of them had scored more than 30. And while Kohli played that marvelous innings, he was the only batsman to score at a strike rate of more than 100. The question, the age old question still remains what happens when India lose their openers? Rohit Sharma and Shikhar Dhawan in the past, and Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul uh, in, in, in this setup, given that Dhawan is no longer playing in this tournament, what happens when these two get out early? One of the two things can happen, or probably both. One, the onus is on Hardik Pandya and to a lesser extent on Kedar Jadav to improve the scoring. Kedar Jadav did not uh, back as quickly as what India would have wanted uh, in that game against Afghanistan. But two, and more importantly, the Indian bowling will then have to take up much more responsibility to restrict the opposition to whatever the score is or whatever the target is in the, in the last game, it was 224. Uh, but teams have gone in the chase knowing that even when they need 119 runs from 22 overs as Afghanistan did in the previous game, the target is, uh, is sometimes not that easy given the number of overs that Kumbra has to go with, given the number of overs that Shami has to go with, and given the Indian students. This has happened in the past as well. As recently as the Australia tour of India in 2019, there was an ODI in Nagpur where India were restricted to 250 
and uh, Australia needed just 115 runs in the final 20 overs, 65 runs in the last 10 overs with wickets in hand. What did Boona do? He won a 3 over spell to 2 for 5 and Australia lost the match. There was another match in 2017 against New Zealand where something similar happened. It was a high scoring match and Boomer ended with figures of less than 6 runs in over. So that is what you get when there is just a Boomer in your side. That is what you get when uh, the batsmen do not do their job which was the case last time. India still remains a very, very tough opposition to beat. a near successful run chase against New Zealand, Jason Holder, the West Indies captain, said it was not a case of what if. I'm sure if New Zealand lost again, there would be a lot of what if with them too. You know, even although they won the game, probably still, still a few what ifs. You know, you can sit here and say, and say what if, but at the end of the day, that's just the way the game is played. But if you look back in the tournament, I think the fans would agree, especially the West Indian fans, that it has been a case of what if. It has been a case of and a lot of hard rates. What if that match against South Africa had not been laid off? What if Carlos Brathwaite and Jason Holder had shown some restraint against Australia and won them that game from the position that they were in? And what if Carlos Brathwaite shot, which was caught by Trent Bolt, travelled an extra five meters? Things might have been very different. You know, West Keys is an exciting team. And that's the reason why they have so many fans all around the world, not just in the Caribbean. But the problem is about taking the opportunities, and that is something that West Indies have not been able to do after that first game against Pakistan, where they bowled them out for 105, smashed their way through and won by a long margin. Now, let's take the emotions out of this. Let's take the fact that we're all West Indies fans out of this. Uh, the last time West Indies won a series, and the ODI series, whether it's bilateral or uh, having more than two countries uh, uh, was way back in 2003, August 2003. So that's nearly five years since they won a series. Talk about the Champions Trophy. They could not qualify for the Champions Trophy because they didn't the top eight teams qualified. They were not ranked eight. Even to get through to the World Cup, they needed to go through the qualifiers and to get to the final of that qualifier to make it through. So it's a team that has kind of struggled in the ODI format in recent times. And as recent as five years we talked about. The reason for this optimism was down to the fact that in recent times, and now I'm talking about the last six or eight months, things have looked positive. They held England to a two-all draw in a bilateral series against India. In India, the scoreline was one all at the end of the third match with one match tie, and India had to recall their uh, main players, Imran Sikh back in that third one day, uh, and the rest of them also came back to the recommended two ODIs before India could win that series 3-1. Then again, there was a reconciliation between the West Indies cricket board and the players. So a lot of good things were happening. Andre Russell came back into the squad. Chris Gale has been doing well ever since that champion, ever since the World Cup qualifiers. So a lot of good things happening. But unfortunately, what the West Indies are left with right now are the need is the need to play for for right? Because their chances of getting to the semi-finals have almost diminished to next to nothing. And uh, what they would want to do is end the tournament on a high, end the tournament with a couple of wins, end the tournament with giving that hope again to their fans that there is something more expected out of them in ODI cricket over the next four years. Unfortunately for the West Indies, uh, one of those pillars of exciting cricket, one of those pillars who's, who's delivered all the time and plays uh, any form of cricket, Andre Russell has been ruled out of the tournament. This place in the squad will be taken by Sunil Ambris. Uh, Sunil Ambris, in fact, you, you hear about his stats in recent times. You will hear about his stats in ODI cricket uh, in our stats section. But he's an exciting player as well. Uh, the other problem that West Indies have is that Evan Lewis is uh, probably not yet fit. More news is awaited on that. But he did not uh, he did not act in his customary opening position in the previous game. He came down the order at number eight, played just three balls, got up and went up. And, and it would be interesting to see whether he can make it back into the, into the playing level. Here are a few stats that might interest you for this uh, India West Indies encounter. Overall, ODI cricket, West Indies still hold that edge 62 59 in their favor, but it's narrowing, the gap is narrowing. 
in uh, at the end of the 92 World Cup where West Indies had beaten India to knock them out of the tournament. It was 29-10 in favor of the West Indies. It's 62-59 uh, right now. 5-3 in favor of uh, India in World Cup cricket. Uh, the 92 win that I was talking about for the West Indies was the last time West Indies beat India in World Cup. 96, India India won that game in I think Gwalior it was in 2011 again India beat uh, West Indies and then there was just that game in 2015 at Perth where India won again. Uh, average wise, uh, Andre Russell's uh, replacement, Sunil Lambres, and we had spoken about Ambres in our previous section, he averages 105 at the back. The only West Indian batsman to average that much. Obviously, you've got to take into account that he's played just six matches, scored more than 300 runs, but that average will, will help him get some confidence going into this tournament. Kohli's average of 79 uh, is the best in India West Indies cricket when you look at uh, uh, the Indian side of things. Uh, Umrah averages 11.8 with the, with the ball against West Indies. So that's going to be something. Kohli, we saw in the nets today, you might see some clips as well. He was timing the ball really well, uh, almost knocked a bowler off, one of the one of the net bowlers off. And uh, Bumrah, we've seen what he did in the previous game, took those two wickets in an over and we've seen uh, he's been doing that all throughout his career. Moving on, in the last few years, uh, Andreas' bowling has been good as well, averages 28 with the ball, but he averages 54 versus India. Uh, as a batsman and uh, that could have cost some grief for Indians. Uh, he's not there. It is going to be Shimron Hetmeyer who will have to take up the charge because he averages 51 in that he averaged 51 in that previous series against India that was played in 2018. So one to look, one to watch out for as well. Now there have been only four Indian bowlers who have taken a five wicket haul against West Indies in all cricket, not just World Cup cricket. Ravindra Jadeja is one of them. You remember Kumle had taken a six for twelve at Eden Gardens in that in the final, but Ravindra Jadeja is one of them, and he's not played a single game in this tournament. He might, might, might just make it into the squad to strengthen them batting into the playing era. So let's see. Let's keep a let's keep a close eye on that one as well. Lastly, let's look at some predictions. Now, West Indies have nothing to lose, as we have discussed. Uh, they would probably want to go out on a high, win a couple of matches, uh, and they would want to throw their bats around at everything that they face because that's how they have played their cricket, that's how they would want to uh, go out in this tournament. But against a team that has a Bumrah, against a team that has uh, someone like Shami, who bowl quick, who bowl at the bodies, who, who try to uh, really restrain the batsmen. And pick up wickets uh, when batsmen go after them. It might be a diff difficult task, and I think that West Indies might be bowled out for a sub 250 score if they bat first. More interestingly, in this tournament so far, India have obviously played a game less, but when you look at their respective run rates, both teams have a run rate of exactly 5.78 runs per over as a batting unit. Will we see the first tie of the 2019 World Cup? here at Manchester at the Old Trafford.